Thousands of people have taken to the streets in Venezuela to protest against what they call President Nicolas Maduro's fraudulent election win. Now, the protests which the government denounced as an attempted coup began after the election board declared on Monday that Maduro had won a third term with 50%. 51% of the votes, defying all exit polls. However, the opposition says that 80% of vote rallies to which it has access shows its con its contestant, Edmundo Gonzalez, had more than twice as many votes as Maduro. Footage shared on social networks showed protesters tearing down statues of Chavez in several Venezuelan cities. According to reports, at least five statues were destroyed during the anti-government protests. The clashes have resulted in the death of at least 11 people and according to Venezuelan authorities, at least 749 people have been detained amid recent protests. The detainees are being charged with offences such as public intimidation, incitement to hatred and in most severe cases, terrorism. The renewed instability has brought divided international reaction in the latest US President Joe Biden spoke with Brazilian President Lula da Silva where they agreed that the Venezuelan government must quickly publish the vote tallies of Sunday's contested election and end the crisis in the country. The United States has further said that it is mulling fresh sanctions on individuals linked to the election unless there was greater transparency about the vote. We have serious concerns that the result announced does not reflect the will or the votes of the Venezuelan people. It's critical that every vote be counted fairly and transparently, that election officials immediately share information with the opposition and independent observers without delay, and that the electoral authorities publish the detailed tabulation of votes. Meanwhile, Brazil's government on Monday hailed what it called a peaceful election day in Venezuela and said that it was closely monitoring the vote count. A slew of Latin American leaders have also cast a doubt on the election results, demanding for a complete review of the poll results. They include Argentina, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Guatemala, Panama, Paraguay, Peru, the, Dominic, the Dominican Republic and Uruguay. In response, the Venezuelan government has announced the withdrawal of all diplomatic staff from the embassies of these Latin American nations. Meanwhile, Copa Airlines on Tuesday said that Venezuela had decided to temporarily suspend all commercial flights between Panama and Venezuela beginning on Wednesday evening. All right, joining us live for more on this from Caracas, Venezuela, we have with us journalist and political analyst Diego Sequeira. Thank you so much for joining us on World DNA. Uh, now, thank you. Thank you for having me. Right, so uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, I want to begin by asking you, one, what is the situation on ground right now? And I also wanted to understand that Maduro's camp has declared the ongoing violent protest as a coup in progress. Do you think... The violent protests, the unrest could lead to any sort of a change in regime? I hardly believe that's the case right now, at least at this point in, in time. There are many patterns that actually prove what the uh, president is saying, especially the, how the highly targeted attacks and also the, the focus on the protest, which describes something that it will always be beyond the usual. Also because, for example, today is a day that we haven't had the same uh, hype we had yesterday, so that also tells, tells you some things. So, so uh, in that sense, I feel it's really hard for it to happen at, in this, at this point. 
Mr. Sequera, how important is a change of government in Venezuela for uh, the U.S.? And I'd just like you to weigh in on this, given that you are there in Caracas, you know, obviously understand this much better than any foreign report can inform the rest of the world. But uh, given that a third of the population has already migrated from Venezuela in recent years, and that's again as per reports, how important is it for the U.S. at this point? Well, it's still very important. I mean, Venezuela is still an energy powerhouse that has been sanctioned and regime change attempted, sorry for the construction, uh, for the last 10 years, 11 years, even if we, during the whole of the Maduro government, and we can go even further back. But um, so that describes the interest in, the, in, the, in that sense. Although in this case, uh, for example, energy markets are where, where, where if you follow the, if you see a re report, for example, from the Wall Street Journal, not a friend of Venezuela, talking about they rather prefer a, a government of Nicolás Maduro because of stability. That's how complicated and an outlier and radical could the other, the opposite candidate be. So that also describes that perhaps not everyone has sees the same thing from the U.S. at this point. We can see even more militant positions from, for example, congressmen and senators than from the language that the White House is using right now. Uh, but of course, it would mean a lot because it has been one of his main interests in a very long time. Uh, it, it would be, it would mean the realignment of an strategic access precisely to these resources and also the, like the center of the of the of their interest. And also, you have the fact that you would also discipline a project that went against the current, against the against the hegemonic current in the region. Uh, all right, so I also want to understand, of course, you've seen the international reactions that are pouring in. Venezuelan government said that it's withdrawing its diplomatic staff from seven Latin American countries that questioned the election victory of Maduro. Can Maduro government afford to isolate itself on the global stage like this? Well, it has been isolated before. I mean, it's not the first time we go through this, and precisely for many of those countries. Remind, remember that back from 2017 until 2020, if I'm not, yeah, 2020, we, there was the Lima Group that actually also we, we, was composed by almost the same countries that are doing it right now. So this is not a first one for Venezuela either. And it found, it still found a way to connect with other countries and trade in a very complicated context. Still, things have loosened up a bit, but um, this association not, not even didn't work for them. It didn't work for business at all. So this kind of put things into perspective. Who's actually isolating who currently? Things can go to normal quite easily once the sit once we are over this part of the situation. I'm, for, I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. Mm -hmm. But this would be wouldn't be the first time that we have that kind of foreign pressure. Foreign pressure. It's interesting you mentioned that. All right. Thank you so much for joining in. That was Diego Sequera joining us from Caracas. Pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. All right. Our principal diplomatic correspondent, Sidhan Sibal, also spoke to Panama's foreign minister, Javier Martinez Vasquez, about the contentious election results and the ongoing agitation in its neighboring country. Listen to this. Are you speaking to other countries in the region about um, what has uh, happened in terms of the election results in Venezuela? And have you spoken to the Americans as well? Uh, we have seen comments uh, uh, by the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris as well. She has made a tweet as well. Um, any comments on that? Well, we respect each country's decision about the current situation in Venezuela. I can tell you that uh, we in Latin America uh, have a group of foreign ministers. Um, about nine countries are in agreement with Panama position. Probably uh, their statements can be a little bit different, but the aim is the same. We need to have access to the uh, documents that support the results, and we need to have independent auditing of the results. Um, until then, we will maintain our current position. Democracy is a principle that cannot be negotiated. Uh, our president is committed to the rule of law. Our president is committed to uh, transparent elections, specifically after he experienced some irregularities during, during our process in May. So Panama must be an ally of democracy. Uh, your country is the biggest democracy in the world. You just had an excellent uh, democratic exercise. 
uh, hundred millions of people uh, when voting. Um, the transparency of your election is an example to the world. So that's why we have taken this position in regard to the Venezuelan election. We need transparency. We need uh, Venezuelans uh, uh, to, to know the full results, the transparency of the election to be uh, made fully, and then uh, we can you know, move forward uh, in, in different directions if, if uh, uh, the results are made public, um, so far they haven't. So our position is to uh, uh, support the democratic value of Venezuela and to support the full transparency of the elections.